definitely going to regret having worn this. What's up guys, my name is Nathan and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be channeling my inner Crep City Dad. I'm going to be relaying this information that I learned to you a week ago, acting like I knew it all along. Obviously that makes me an OG, you know what those two letters stand for. Fucking annoying. So today we're going to be talking about Vibram, founded in 1937 by Vital Bramani. And I'm putting on my best imp impression. I'm doing my best attempt to make it not sound shit, so hopefully it doesn't. So Vibram began as a brand focused solely hey, on producing rubber outsoles for footwear and replacing leather boot soles with their own more superior product. Much of this focus was born out of a fatal incident in the Italian Alps in 1935, which led to the deaths of six of Vital's friends, blamed partly on their use of inadequate hiking footwear. So following this, he created his first sole after two years of development, the vulcanized rubber tank tread inspired Caramato, which was officially backed by Pirelli. And if that does sound familiar, it's one of those brands that we all know, but sometimes don't know why and it's because it's a tyre manufacturer and we all have an ingrained love for rubber and tyres. The sole was so good in fact that in 1954 the first successful hike to the K2 summit was done in a boot done in this tooling. The K2 summit by the way is the second highest mountain in the entire world and in 1954 that sounds pretty impressive to me considering I can barely get out of bed in the morning. Nearly a hundred years later and the company has factories in Brazil, China, the Czech Republic, the States and gets used by 1,000 footwear manufacturers creating 35 million soles a year. And whilst that might be impressive, they also had product placement in the B movie, so don't tell me that they aren't influential, please. Following their focus on footwear and hiking bros, they began broadening their horizons and experimenting with more non-mountaineering soles. And given the rise of Normcore on the ugly shoe, it's not an unlikely horizon to shoot for. Due to the totally unplanned resurgence of the uncool and downright ugly, <laughs> Vagram had an opportunity to step it up. Some experiments, however, such as the monstrosity that is the five finger barefoot trail shoe from 1999, maybe took the ugly a bit too far, but it really showed that they were willing to change the pace and it was largely celebrated at launch. So they put their barefoot in the deep end and aptly went off the beaten track and began to explore a new audience, mainly in streetwear and fashion in general. Think less beat up brown red wings, jeans and shoes kind of guys that Powerland Bandit takes the piss out of a more Dover Street Market staff, but maybe not as avant-garde. Actually, no, I think they've done that too. What Vibram brought to it into the world of fashion was an unmatched heritage and a brand that stood the test of time. But more importantly, a durable soul that promises to exceed the life of the shoe itself. Despite all of this, however, their break into fashion didn't come instantly. In fact, the first time they featured significantly was in the early 2000s, alongside a very young brand we now know to be Prada. On the runway, Vibram Souls donned the underside of a plethora of footwear for the launch of Prada Sports Collection. Following the success of this collaboration, they went on to work with more big names in high fashion, such as Margiela, Giorgio Armani, and even Dior under John Galliano, sporting their infamous rolling gait sole on a contrasting upper of an Oxford and Wallaby style shoe. The type of footwear that we see Virgil riffing off now. Ripping off, sorry, typo. Despite these fashion houses and their ateliers having access to almost presumably anything on earth, collaborating with a brand on footwear shows their intention to put out quality, whilst also acknowledging their position and expertise of Vibram in creating the tooling that they so desire. This further cements Vibram's undefeated reign on technical footwear and sole design in a market that they'd previously not stepped foot in. A big one in recent years has been their collaboration and ongoing work with Alix and Matthew Williams. Given his memory of wearing Vibram boots as a child, the collaboration did seem quite fitting. His most memorable work with Vibram, in my opinion, is the detachable sole that he developed alongside Vibram that comes on and off of his derby shoe. Getting Vibram to help develop this sole meant that you could wear the derby in two ways, allowing you to visit that wear house rave two hours before your wedding. Similarly, he's used Vibram's heavily technical detachable sole in the past on runway and within the brand's line of boots. And this is before they worked alongside each other and developed sole together. Doubling down on their partnership and throwing another cog into the giant machine in the form of Nike, Matthew once again got a heavy hand from Vibram when developing the Nike Free TR3 SP. Got it, finally. And the detachable crampon that makes the shoe wearable on or off of a hike or just attaching it to other shoes for clout. We've also seen the rolling gate sole that I mentioned earlier as used by John Galliano 
for Dior in a plethora of other companies, such as High Tech, Off White, our legacy, Visvim, and we've seen other soles featured on the Hocker one, the New Balenciero, the Represent Terrier, and even Jill Sander's ankle boots. They've pretty much become mainstay at filling pieces as well. Despite never overtaking the aesthetics of a sneaker or a shoe, Vibram soles have slowly but surely become a pivotal part of footwear and streetwear culture, with its golden tag easily recognisable as either an E or as the brand. It's enabled upstart brands without the means or access to develop their own cushioning or sole technology. A good chance at compete in the ever-growing global market and continues to prove its worth anywhere it's used. With over a thousand employees worldwide and under 70 years under its belt, Vibram has worked with some of fashion's finest and biggest fashion houses and has become synonymous with quality, innovation and design. And while sneakers often come and go, releasing every other week or every week, Vibram remains pivotal to the future of footwear and is definitely here to stay. That's pretty much it guys, thanks for watching the video, I hope you learned a bit about Vibram because I literally didn't even know anything about it before and thought I'd make this video, do some research and educate people on this company that's seemingly in every corner of footwear and streetwear but without any sort of knowing about it. Yeah, I just found it really interesting anyway so hope you enjoyed it as I said, I'll say it again I'll catch you in the next one. Peace!